All right. Now we're going to be talking about 10 steps to your first big real estate deal. But if you've already been doing real estate, you're going to benefit from this as well. Now, I've been doing a series on this very thing to help people to really know what to do and how to do it. And this week, I'm going to talk about building an amazing team. So everyone needs to have a great team. And if you're just getting started or you've been in the business for years, you've got something to learn about this because I wish someone had taught me this when I got started how important it was, not just a good idea, but important it was for the success of me and my business in order to have team members that could help me through the, the not only the learning curve, but the doing curve, right? Because there is a doing curve to this business and there's a lot of moving parts at certain times of a deal. And so sure enough, you're doing your marketing, you're getting the leads, You've got customers now doing your house monster. Now we got to go find property. Well, we got to get deal. We got to get leads to get deals. We got to get appointments first, and then we got to go visit with the sellers. We got to structure the deal in the right way that the seller says yes. And when they say yes, now we've got to have the team members take over. So one of the things that we love is to have a great relationship with a real estate agent, at least one. We've got dozens, dozens of relationship with real estate agents. Why? Because they come and go. Deals, opportunities come and go. You're not going to get them from the same agent. So I encourage you to get multiple relationships, but there's going to be one very special relationship that you're going to develop because that's going to get you into the MLS. Now, I will tell you, that about 60% of my clients that become street smart and are certified affordable housing providers are actually licensed. They're licensed real estate agents. So this is very easy for them because they can go right on the MLS and they can find deals and they can put parameters in place so they can get notified when certain deals come into the market, come online. And it's a great thing when you've got the house monster because here you've got a customer just now. And as I was telling you earlier, maybe with $30,000 put down. All right, what house are you going to find for them? And of course, they're telling you up front how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. Maybe they have a location preference. Maybe they have special needs, a ramp, something like that for a handicapped individual. So it could be anything that might be a need for that particular group or, or um, family. So here's the opportunity. You've got a real estate agent. You tell them, okay, I've got this customer. I want to find a property in this location. I'm looking for this many bedrooms and this many bathrooms. And what I want you to do is find a property that's been on the market for a while, 30, 60, 90 days, something that's been on the market shop worn, depending on how busy and how uh, vibrant the market is where you are. And then the agent can bring those to you as possible deals to do. Well, that can come through an agent and the agent has a motivation to do that because they're going to earn a real estate commission as a result of it. And if they bring you the buyer as well, they could actually earn both sides of the commission. So there's a lot of incentive for someone to want to be a member of your team, particularly when you tell them who you are and what you do. And here's why it's important, because you tell them that you only want their leftovers. You, the people they can't list their homes, you want to have a shot at them after they get up and leave, so to speak, and not able to list the property. Okay, then they can refer that deal to you. Another is people they can't place into a home because they don't have good enough credit or good enough down payment. Those are referrals that they can give you. So those are it's a powerful relationship that can come from that and those real estate agents. All right, that's a team member. The second team member that I want you to think about is title company slash attorney. So different states have different requirements for closings. You're going to need a closing agent. And this is such a powerful message and, and piece of training that I want to give you is that it took me years to figure this one out, but different sellers use different attorneys slash title companies. Well, they want you to go to the one they already know and that they have a relationship with. Likewise, 
you should have one that you know, and you have a relationship with. When we put a property under contract, in fact, I just did one today and here's what happened. So they told me, oh, Lou, you know, we want to buy that lot from you. We're very interested in this lot. We want to buy that lot from you. We agreed on the price. We agreed on the terms. And then they said, but you got to close at our attorney. I said, it's not going to happen. And they said, what are you talking about? I said, we close all of our transactions at the same place. And there's a reason for that, that we buy properties in trust and we sell properties out of trust. They have all of our paperwork. They have all of our documentation. It eliminates incredible headaches for me and everybody involved because they're always going to ask for things that I'm not going to give them. They're going to ask for the full trust. They're going to ask for a lot of details about the trust that I'm not going to give them. So if you don't want to have trouble, if you don't want to have challenges, we're going to close with the closing agent that we've already set up that already has all the things to be able to ensure your title without having any issues at all. Well, they stumbled and fumbled and for about three days they came back and said, okay, Lou, you got it. So I will say that you have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And uh, this is an example of that over the years, many, 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 many times people have always insisted, even banks, I mean, just incredible. They've always got to set up someplace else. We always insist that we're going to close it where we are. And in 96% of the cases we went. So I just want to give you that uh, knowledge that having that team member is very important because what are they going to do? They're going to look out for you. If you are a regular customer that is bringing them business over and over again, then they are going to be looking out for you. They're going to get your title search done first. They're going to get your paperwork done first. They're going to give you a better deal on closing costs than they give everybody else. It's just a great relationship. And yes, what we have is an interview form where we discover what their fees are and we negotiate our relationship with them. But it's not just for that one transaction. It's from now on. And that can be a powerful team member to have because they're going to look out for you. They're going to be looking out for your title on properties that you're buying. And I'll tell you something, if you buy it through one attorney and you close it through the same attorney, if there is a title problem, you'll never hear about it because <laughs> they're the ones that were supposed to clean it up in the first place. So you're, you're not going to have the pain and suffering that you might have if you went to a different title company. So that's my suggestion for you. You need a good, solid real estate agent. You need a title company. You need a mortgage broker as well. Now we do have a national solution for that. Our mortgage whiz, streetsmartwiz.com forward slash mortgage whiz. That is another solution that we have for you. And that is your mortgage broker. So when your buyer has good enough credit, good enough down payment, then you want to refer them in house, so to speak, because that mortgage broker is going to tell you things that somebody that's not connected with you is not going to tell you. And that can help you to help the buyer to be able to get the deal done. Uh, so definitely having that mortgage broker on your team and in your ear, will assist you in shaving many days and sometimes saving deals simply because you're aware of a challenge that might exist on their credit or some other thing. Maybe they're short on funds. There's a way that you could solve that problem without missing the deal, without losing the deal. Um, so there's, those are three important team members. I would say a fourth would be depending on the amount of time you have to work with. And, First of all, you, we have to look at your own personality. You either have a personality where you're good with people, you're social, you're able to communicate with people in a good way. You like people and that is a good person to be your buyer. Uh, and if, if that's you, then you're good in the buying realm. Well, over in the selling realm, that's someone who's very good with people, who's good with paperwork, details, doesn't mind going over the program over and over and over and over again. Doesn't mind doing all the back end after the people move into the home and doing the ongoing collections and all the processes to get people moved up the path to home ownership. That's a great team member. Well, maybe 
you're married to that person, that other person, because I say that this is very much a two personality business. There's a buying side of this business. There's a selling side of this business. And I say that if you have that other person on your team as a spouse, you've got a great thing. But many of my licensees are single, single mothers, fathers, individuals, the spouse has no interest in the business, whatever the case may be, a good news, we can hire the missing. So whatever may be missing in what you're good at and somebody else is good at, then we can hire that person that is good at the things that you are not good at. So that's our assist with. And we do have that. We do have that as part of our program because we do want our licensees to be successful. And we found that there's many things in this business that are very repetitious and that there's people out there that can do those repetitious things, very well trained to do it and very inexpensive as well. So imagine that a lot of our business can actually be done remotely. You do not have to have someone coming to your house. You do not have to have someone coming to your office. They can actually be doing this in another part of the town, in another part of the state, in another part of the country, in another country as well to be able to do your business. So we have identified those folks and we call them our assist whiz. And you can definitely find out about that as well. So think to yourself. Do I have a team? Who's on my team? Are they strong enough to be members of my team? Are they people that can actually do what I'm asking them to do on a regular basis? Can I depend on them? Are they giving me a good deal? Those are all factors in finding good team members. And that's a good starting point. I don't want to load you up with too many uh, team members, but there's another one that you, you want as well. And that's a good contractor, a good all around contractor. They can do many things, minor plumbing, minor heating and air conditioning, minor electrical, minor repairs, hang ceiling fans, order things, move, move things and also pick up things, Home Depot, get things done. And you don't have to be the one to do that. So hooking up with a good, handy person that can do many things, not a single thing, but many things is great. Now, as your business expands, you're going to get individuals in each one of those different trades. But in the beginning, having someone that you can just call upon to help you get a property ready for a client is a great team member to have as well. So there you go. There's five team members that we need to organize and I've given you exactly what to do and how to do it.